are a number of ways of assessing learning needs. Very often, the most obvious is to ask a trainee what they need to know. The downside of that, of course, is that quite often people volunteer things that they already know lots about. So whatever you're doing, it's really important to sit in and observe a trainee actually consulting with patients. Sitting in is a very, very powerful tool for a teacher, particularly if it's done well. Um, I remember several occasions as a trainee myself and observing other trainers when the trainer sitting in sits in, a, in, in the room uh, reading the post or shuffling papers or making a noise. Uh, and that can be really quite interfering with the consultation. But if the person sits quietly and doesn't make eye contact with the patient, is concentrating in a very specific way, looking at the waste paper basket as though the waste paper basket contains the secret of the universe. If the person is looking that way but yet sensing what's going on in the room and observing procedures, then it can be really powerful. The great thing about it is that you don't know what's going to come up um, and you can see it for real. Many people like to take a shortcut and say, oh, I'm just going to have a look at a video of my trainee. But actually, videos are often self-selected by the trainee, and there's nothing better than sitting in on a regular basis, perhaps just for an hour. The observer shouldn't take part in the consultation unless specifically invited to do so by the trainee. So having some basic ground rules is important. For example, if the patient and the trainer already have a relationship, then eye contact between the trainer and the patient may change this from a one-to-one -to, -one to a three-way conversation. And that can undermine the trainee uh, and be very difficult. If it is a joint surgery explicitly, that's different. But if this is for the purpose of sitting in, then it's really important that the uh, trainer merges into the background. The Jahari window is a useful framework for thinking about learning needs. Joe and Harry were two therapists in California in the 1970s and they looked at the relationship between a therapist and a client and in many ways this relationship between two people has been extended to looking at the relationship between a teacher and a learner and it's even been used famously by Donald Rumsfeld in talking about military strategy in the Iraq war. So what Joe and Harry said was that between a therapist and a client, some things were open. They were known to the person and known to the therapist. They were in an open arena. And yet there were also some things that the client perhaps felt a bit ashamed about, perhaps some abuse in the past, didn't quite feel ready to disclose this. So this was hidden. It was known to the person, but not known to the other, not known to the therapist. In addition, one of the things about the therapeutic relationship was that the therapist hopes to be able to give feedback to the person about things that they're not aware of. The therapist is aware of it, but the individual isn't, and that's described as a blind spot. Finally, there are areas which are unknown to both parties, which come up during the therapeutic relationship as a surprise, and they are also a fruitful area for work. So you can see how this is quite useful in terms of understanding learning needs. If I talk, for example, to my appraiser, I'm very happy to say that I'm not particularly familiar with some of the new trends that there are in something that's actually perhaps small print, perhaps I wouldn't need to know about it. But actually, I'm not quite ready to say something where I realise that I've got a gap and it's an important gap, but I'm not sure I quite trust this person yet. Um, so I'm not going to tell them that I really need to know about something basic. For example, the new management guidelines for hypertension. I wouldn't, I wouldn't yet feel comfortable. I need to develop a relationship of trust with that person. As trust increases, the more information will be open to both the trainee and the appraiser. And as the relationship develops, the appraiser will be looking to ask searching questions that might trigger new insights and enable them to give feedback. So in a sense that's opening up the open box and reducing the blind spot because of developing a new understanding in this conversation. 
The unknown unknowns are the most difficult part of the Johari window, and that in a way is why Donald Rumsfeld got into so much trouble, because he was trying to explain on video at a press conference what the unknown unknowns were about. Unknown unknowns can, can come in all sorts of guises. For example, the learner may do a multiple choice question um, series and, and find that they um, thought, and the teacher also thought, that they were quite good, for example, at cardiology. And, and you suddenly get this result that shows the score on cardiovascular questions was rather low. Hopefully, uh, during case discussion, some random cases will be chosen. And sometimes when that happens, both the teacher and the trainee realise that there is a topic that both of them need to mug up on, and that can then become the basis of a subsequent tutorial and learning for both parties. There are several important implications of this model for the teacher. One of the implications is that it's important to have a relationship of trust between the teacher and the learner. That will enable the hidden window to be reduced in size and the open window to expand. This relationship is inevitably a relationship based upon power. There is a power relationship and getting the relationship right at the beginning is crucial. Teachers sometimes see themselves as a sage on the stage, and this model sees the teacher as the all-powerful giver of information. Perhaps more appropriate in a contemporary context is the idea of the teacher as a guide by your side, who's helping you in partnership to go on a journey together, asking questions and not necessarily just giving you the answers on a plate. So the relationship of trust is, is really important. The blind area of the Johari window shows us that asking the right question at the right time can provoke a new insight for the learner, and sometimes giving direct feedback can achieve the same goal. So it's important to assess both learning wants and learning needs. To assess learning needs, it's important to observe the trainee in consultation with patients, to look at any other sources of information like online learning, multiple choice questions and case discussion to build up a picture of what a trainee needs to learn. Here are some questions that are intended to get you thinking about this subject in greater depth. What are the advantages and disadvantages of different ways of assessing learning needs? Can you summarise the main implications of the Jahari window for you as a teacher? If you wish to explore this topic further, a good starting point is our e-learning module on assessing educational needs. Go to faculty.londondeanery.ac.uk forward slash e-learning and select the topic from the left-hand panel. If you're a student on our postgraduate certificate course, you'll find references and suggestions for additional reading within the online resource folder.